So in this video, I want to talk about the nice guy syndrome, but a specific part of the nice guy syndrome. Can releasing and revealing cause you to become a nice guy? This is an interesting question, isn't it? I got this question this week twice within a couple minutes of each other. I had a guy from India call and ask me that question. He said, look, I've been doing revealing and releasing and I really feel like I'm growing a lot. Also becoming a nice guy. I used to be uh, not so nice and now I feel more sensitive. And then and literally like two minutes later, another guy, I believe from Israel, asked me the same question. And it made me think, is this happening a lot? Is this happening to a lot of guys? I know exactly what it is. We got to talk about this. So if this is happening to you, I want to hear about it in the comments because this is something we need to definitely address. If you understand the stages of development in, uh, in men and women, as, as David Data describes, only three stages, um, then you'll understand why this is happening. In the first stage, men are very masculine, but they don't have a lot of feminine development, and it's my way or the highway, get the fuck out. I'm, I'm the king of the castle, this is how it goes. This is where you might find your gangsters, or guys that really care, but are really um, grounded masculine men, and they feel like if they control everything, everything's gonna work exactly the way they want. And then in this stage, you also have women that use their manipulative ability, their ability to, 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 you, to read and feel subtle communication because they're so feminine, feel into you so deep that they say just the right things to nudge everything where they want it. And again, it comes back to what they have decided is best for you, just like the man. He has decided what is best through his masculine energy. She's going to use her feminine energy to decide what's best for you and for everybody and make that happen. They have a lot of polarity. They're very powerful beings. They're not afraid to piss each other off to get, a, get what they need done. But that's also part of what makes them sexually attracted to each other and makes them compatible. As we grow and these feminine women started to move into feminism, let's say, and started to claim their power and say, I, I, I don't need a man, I'm gonna be my own masculine. They started to grow their masculine energy and they started to say no more and they started to get bolder like the men and they started to really move into this energy and tell men, I don't need you to take care of me, I can take care of myself. But what ended up happening was very, very interesting. The men started to flow more. They started to say, oh, I'm gonna, you know, kick back, relax, I'm not gonna push so hard. And, and suddenly, many years later, we end up with half masculine and half feminine men and women. We call this the second stage. This is where the nice guy is born and the nice girl is born. We become super vulnerable and sensitive and we have some masculine and we have some feeling, but, we, but, our, but our feeling has a lot of analytical nature to it. And we're always trying to think about what's right and what's wrong, get it just right. And our masculine grounds, but it doesn't ground well enough to get all the, mo the energy out of our body when it builds up. So let's say you're out on a date and the girl gets a little mad immediately. Like she's annoyed. She doesn't like the restaurant. She thinks the, the waiter's rude. And immediately as a nice guy, you're trying to solve the problem. I got to fix this. I got to make her happy. I got to get rid of the tension so that she feels comfortable so she'll like me. But in reality, the more you get rid of tension, the more you kill attraction. That's just the way it goes. See, attraction's created through tension. And a man that can handle the tension well, grounded out, is really sexy. But a guy who has to manipulate the outside world to get rid of the tension is not sexy. So he sits there and goes, do you wanna to go to another restaurant? Or, you know, you know um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have a talk with the waiter. Excuse me, sir, and he doesn't have any balls, he doesn't have any gumption, he doesn't want to upset the waiter, doesn't want to upset her, he's trying to make everybody happy. And so in that, he's not sexy. And so she gets annoyed, right? Um, you also have nice girls that do this too. And this lack of development is the nice guy syndrome. If you want to know more about this, read No More Mr. Nice Guy. There's a whole bunch of reasons for it. Powerful read, awesome book, check it out. Now, if you start to understand that the nice guy is this half masculine, half feminine, or, or, or very vulnerable, he's very vulnerable and doesn't know how to deal with his vulnerability, that's the best way to put it. He's very, uh, so there's an insecurity and even a little victim-y energy to him typically. How that gets created in somebody who wasn't the nice guy before is as he starts to release, he starts to become vulnerable. All his body armor around his feelings, he starts to feel more emotions, he starts to feel his sadness. Any pains that he pushed down as a man, I pushed it all down, they all start to come out. When they come out, he starts to become reactive. He starts to become nervous to them. He starts to feel other people's emotions too and he wants to help them all. He wants to save them because he doesn't like feeling their pain because it makes him feel his pain. 
That's the beginning of the nice guy syndrome. That's the beginning of the second stage. And the more he tries to fix things, the more he has to fix all the time. It kind of becomes a never ending cycle. I constantly got to change the outside world to be happy. And doesn't that sound like the bulk of the planet right now? We're going to change everything out here so everybody is happy, but then nobody is happy. That's the way it works. In the third stage, men take their masculine back. They come back and say, you know what? I'm gonna redevelop my masculine and ground myself out, but I'm gonna keep this vulnerability. I'm gonna live for my masculine like a man, keep this vulnerability, and I'm gonna lead and ground from a place of not what I want, not what you want, but what from the moment needs, which means sometimes saying no, setting boundaries, saying stop. Um, and the woman's gonna go back into her feminine and surrender her masculine to him, the man she chose. She doesn't have to do it all the time because she's got masculine development, but the man she chose. And then she's gonna use that feminine to inspire, to nurture, to heal, to grow the world like the feminine was meant to be because beauty needs a witness. And, and what's the point of being alive without feminine and beautiful energy? It's part of what makes us feel alive and, and full of life. When my heart's closed, I'm not feeling uh, feminine in the world. I'm not happy. And also when I'm not grounded, I'm not happy. The two go hand in hand and marry each other. So when you look at it this way, it's really powerful. So we take this feminine and this masculine. And when we step back into our power, we become really powerful. What's happening with these guys that are doing releasing and revealing is they're releasing and revealing, becoming sensitive, and they, they're ungrounding and going up here and starting to become too sensitive. They have to expand their masculine grounding ability to handle all this extra energy from the vulnerability they're creating. They're feeling all these emotions of other people. Now they got to learn to ground those emotions and not try to fix everything all the time. Be a great container for those people to take care of themselves, but not run around and try to take care of the world and fix the world so that he feels better. That's the next stage of development. So you're right on path. You're getting sensitive. And if you keep doing the work and start practicing grounding and learning to ground more, like getting into uh, some of the, the, the videos I have out there on, on grounding and feeling your body and uh, stuff like that, you're gonna start to learn to connect to the earth better. You're gonna start to learn to handle emotion better. And you're gonna start to learn to relate to your body. That's what we do here at Fearless. We teach you to relate to your body so you can communicate better. That's what the Fearless Experience is about. That's what our movement embodiment programs are about. That's what my new book, The Art of Fearless Seduction is about. And if you really want a good introduction to Fearless, I highly recommend you check out that book. You can get an ebook version, you get a physical book, you can get both. And it's a great introduction to these principles to understand grounding and feeling your body better. And uh, it comes with some companion bonuses, so check it out and get those bonuses too. They're awesome. So it's that simple. When it comes down to it, it's getting back into your masculine, but from this third stage perspective. It's so, so powerful. And some good resources on that, if you want another book to read, would be David Data's The Way of Superior Man, which really illustrates what it's like to be a third stage man. He doesn't talk about the three stages in that book, but that book is a powerful description of what it's like to be a third stage man moving out of that second stage. So congratulations. If you're having this problem, you've moved out of your first stage into your second stage, and now as quickly as possible, let's start moving towards that third stage and become the best version of yourself, the version of yourself that the world really needs right now. And that's what I work on with all my clients. That's what I work on with myself is constantly expanding this energy because I used to be an extreme nice guy. God, did that fuck up my life. It's, it's, I look at it as a cocoon stage. You know, I was a cocoon and you turn into a butterfly, a very masculine butterfly, by the way, but a butterfly all the same. So that's where we're headed towards. So um, hopefully this topic's interesting to you. If this has been happening to you, definitely comment below. I really want to hear, maybe I need more resources on this. Maybe you need more tools for this. Maybe we need to do some specific stuff around this. Maybe I need to create a program around this. I don't know. I just want to hear what you guys have to say. So that's what's important. Also, make sure to smash that like button if you haven't already. If it's a video you like, of course, subscribe if you haven't subscribed share the video with your friends anybody you think that could use this video that might be having this problem and remember only the confident really live I'll see you in the next video have a beautiful day